And he was saying, go out of this house because you can't homeschool these kids anymore, okay? Can we have a, a round of applause for the teachers in this house? Yes, my teacher. Yes. Because y'all, y'all had to educate some kids that were educated for a whole year by day drinking mothers. Yes, you did. And even you Christians were doing communion at nine o'clock. You're like, Jesus drank. And we all, it's five o'clock somewhere, okay? Do your sides. And I just kept driving my kids to school every day during the pandemic. I would drive them to school every morning in faith. I mean, the school wasn't open, but I was like, I'm going to drop them off. You find your way home. They have to learn. I'm sorry. I'm going to say something about kids today, and you're not going to like it. We're raising a bunch of wussies. Can I hear an amen? We are raising a generation of... I am not going to do a fundraiser for you to get a Nerf playground, okay? You do not need a Nerf playground. You don't need... A, you need to suck it up on the blacktop like we did, okay? You need to go on the merry-go-round wheel of death and see who makes it. That's what you need to do. You need to go on the little metal slide with your short shorts and you come home bleeding, okay? That's, that's fun. That's fun. You go on the seesaw, you go on the seesaw, you see who your friends are, all right? That's what happens. Nerf playground. They can't even ride a bike with a 47 point helmet, okay? You know what I'm talking about? They are too soft, these kids. They gotta, I mean, they, oh, and you know what? The car seats and like, but with, okay, with the minivans, with the automatic doors, you see these, oh, we can't get Jimmy's fingers stuck or else he will get his feelings hurt and not go to college, okay? You don't even know pain. You don't even know pain or childhood till you get your little brother's fingers stuck in the Toyota and you gotta go inside the house to get the keys and his fingers are still in the car, right? And you're like, don't tell mom, don't tell mom, don't tell mom, don't tell mom. We didn't even have seatbelts in my car. That was for rich kids, okay? Now I'm an 80s kid. Do I have any of my 80s girls here? And my... You guys actually still have energy to like raise your hand? I'm so tired. I'm so tired. But no, my mom told me in the 80s when I was a baby, she said they didn't have car seats for the baby. Does anyone tell me if that's true? Is that true? So I said, Mom, where'd you put the baby? In the back window of the station wagon, obviously. That's, which explains why we're all in therapy. And so, and my mom's watching. I wanna give a shout out to my mom tonight. Speaking of therapy. Yes, I love her. Without my mother, I don't have an ax. And so, because therapy is, so expensive. Uh, my mother's a wonderful Christian woman. She's a Southerner. Do I have any Southerners here today? Not like Fresno, like Southern. <laughs> You're the real South. Where are you from? North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, legit Southerners. So my mother's a Southern Christian. She's a very conservative Christian. We call her church the Frozen Chosen because they don't move at all. They're, or we also call them Presbyterians. But anyway, um, it's great to do comedy at my mom's church because they laugh on the inside. And that's fun. But my mother, she gets a solo every Sunday. Every Sunday, she's not in the choir, but she gets that solo. You know that person that's like, "Ooh, I need to sing higher than everybody else around me. I need to sing higher until the worship team returns my phone calls, okay? Like, that's, that's, okay, you know. And then she's like, how great thou art. And you can hear the voice of God going, not so great, Barbara, not so great. Why don't you go to rehearsal instead of watching Dancing with the Stars? She's Because she goes to two church. Sunday is Dancing with the Stars. Monday, yeah, Monday is Dancing with the Stars. Night. And they are on season 187. They have dug up dead people for the last season for Dancing with the Stars. I said, Mom, no one cares about that show. She said, yes, yes, they do. 47 million Americans just voted last season on the finale. I'm like, we are in a political culture, people. We are electing national leaders. And last year, 47 million Americans exercised their right to vote on the season finale of Dancing with the Stars. Let that sink in. So the next time we elect a president, we're gonna take the top two candidates and we're gonna make them dance it out, okay? Because wouldn't you have watched Biden and Trump do a samba? I would have watched that debate. Dance it out like Greece. What's that story? People ask me what it's like raising kids in Los Angeles. It is not easy. Things were hard. We had to get out. Lucy, I'm sorry I have to share this about you, but my daughter, before we moved, was involved in a gang. It was an all-girl gang in L.A., and they said, if you don't sell these boxes of cookies, we're going to kill your family. <laughs> there was, like, street wars and, like, knife fights. 
200 boxes of cookies. Who sells the cookies, moms? Who sells the cookies? We sell the cookies so my daughter can get a rubber ring from the Dollar Tree. And I was like, when we move to Sacramento, you're gonna do an activity that makes money, all right? None of this. Are there any sports moms here? Any sports moms you can play sports? I feel so sorry for you. I really do, because you have to go to the games and pretend that you care. And so that's hard. I mean, at least we have Instagram. I don't know what my mom was doing in all my activities, like the crossword puzzle. It's horrible. And it's hot. It's very hot here. I'm glad she doesn't play football. That started in August. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, well, you talked about wanting to play softball, and I said no, and I said, because I'm not going to sit out and watch you in those hot games, so I was thinking more of a, like a guitar lesson every three weeks, and then a recital on Zoom, and so that's what I'm... <laughs> but no, um, you know, it's great. What have I been doing? A little bit about me. I had my dream job a couple years ago, and I'm hoping to get it back. I got to write movies for the Hallmark Channel. Does anybody watch Hallmark movies? Some of you, I know. And so we got laid off, and because of the pandemic, no, we got laid off because Aunt Becky went to prison. And so, <laughs> she's out now, she's out, you guys. We gotta have grace, we gotta have grace. Because we need more Christians in Hollywood. When I left, there was only four of us. We had a meeting, and uh, <laughs> well, actually five people came to the meeting. We like to judge people, so we voted one off. But it's okay, you guys. We have Kanye now, it's fine, it's totally fine. <laughs> And apparently we might have Eminem. Has anyone heard that Eminem is on the gospel charts? Thank you, Jesus. If he goes to heaven and Channing Tatum gets saved, we are fine, okay? We are fine. Yes. Why are y'all clapping for Channing Tatum? What Christian movie has he ever done that you guys... I'm saved, okay? And I didn't see Magic Mike because I'm holy. I didn't see it. I was prayer walking one night in a the theater and it came on, but I did not buy a ticket. And if that happens for Magic Mike 3, you can't judge me, okay? You can't. I was just going to support the dance ministry. That's all. Gotta do the outreach. But <laughs> Eminem, did you ever think you would see the day that Eminem was gonna be on the gospel music? Yes, Eminem, woo, yes. You know, yeah, yeah. My daughter doesn't get my culture. She doesn't get anything. I, I can't stand watching movies with a 14 year old. They ruin it. I watch Grease. Who doesn't like Grease, right? She's like, okay, so I have to wear tight leather pants and smoke a cigarette to get a boy to like me. I was like, no, Lucy, you have to dance, okay? You have to dance to get a boy to like you. Gosh, so horrible. So anyways, I wrote two movies for the Hallmark Channel. I know you guys are thinking they're predictable. You know all about it. But I'm a Christian writer. I'm trying to make it different. My partner's name is Claire. And do you guys want to know a little bit about the last one? It hasn't aired yet. It's just between us. You can't tell anybody. But uh, this is, okay. So it's, it's not like you've seen, it's totally different. So there's this lawyer and she lives in New York City, but she had to go back to Montana because her bed and breakfast caught on fire because her grandpa needed the help. And so, no, you guys don't, it's not how you think. She runs into her lumberjack boyfriend, Joey Lawrence, but we're, we're more diverse now, so we cast Mario Lopez. And so, you guys, I'm not gonna tell you how it ends, I'm not, but she's a princess. That's all I'm gonna tell you. So my mother's mad at the Hallmark Channel. She thinks that they're going off, like I know you wanna hear some behind the scenes like little like gossip, what's going on. Some of you think, right, perhaps it's going in a weird, and every time she watches a Hallmark movie, she doesn't like, she calls me. And I was like, I don't have a job with them right now, but I've been praying about it, and I was hoping that they would call us back. But what happened was the president of Hallmark left Hallmark, and he started another network. So you guys need to support this other network. The president of Hallmark named Bill Abbott is a Christian, and he started this network called the GAC Network, and he started poaching the stars. He got Danica McKellar, he got uh, Jesse Metcalf, and then he got Candace Cameron Bure. He got Beyonce to go over to GAC. GAC, you guys, is a big deal. So we were like, okay, we'll write for GAC. We're not picky, we just want cash. And then Hallmark called us like a month ago and then they called us and said, Carrie, will you submit three ideas for a Christian movie? Because now we want to write Christian movies, right? Because now we're finally getting trendy in 2022, you guys, if we pray hard enough, right? I know, like the passion didn't do it. But anyway, so Hallmark, and they're like, you're a Christian, or so you say. And I was like, yes. So we pitched a movie about this big time lawyer and she had to go home because the church caught on fire. And uh, 
But okay, so we're pitching a movie to Hallmark, and then in the meantime, we pitched a movie to GAC, and this just happened last week. We signed Jesse Metcalf. Do you guys know who Jesse Metcalf is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do, you, do anybody watch a Christian show called Desperate Housewives? Anyone? Or John Carter Must Die? So we signed Jesse Metcalf to so star in our movie, and I wish I had a picture of him. He is so good looking. I mean, like, God just used all the good looking jeans on him. He's just like gorgeous and chiseled. And I was like, okay, Jesse, in the snowstorm, when you take your shirt off, I want it to be believable, okay? I just wanted. <laughs> and he said, yes, you guys. He said, <laughs> so, yeah, so pray for me. That one's called Restoration Summer, and we don't know what's happening, but I'm hoping to get my, my job. But I, I'm able to work virtually now, and I wanted to come to Sacramento and have trees and people try to carjack me at the gas station and stuff. So I'm, and my neighbors gave me eggs and vegetables and there was turkeys walking down my street. And then my neighbor gave me like eggs from her illegal chickens. I was like, I'm not telling you, you don't know what I'm doing in my garage. You know, it's, we definitely.